latest release of ArcGIS Pro focuses on performance and productivity improvements, in addition to new capabilities. Let's take a quick tour of some of the new features in ArcGIS Pro, starting with cartography enhancements. This is Esri's world imagery from the Living Atlas that many of us use daily. Because imagery is typically gathered at midday to reduce shadows, the texture of the terrain is lost. But ArcGIS Pro now includes new cartographic enhancements and blending tools, so we can quickly blend this hill shade with the imagery to give it more definition, so now the terrain really shines through. Blending can be used with other features as well. This layer shows California fire perimeters spanning over 100 years, with many of the boundaries overlapping each other. With this new cartographic capability, the features can be blended to understand areas of high fire occurrence, amplifying color intensity as the features overlap. So the highest incident areas are visualized in this bright orange. And finally, an overlay mode can be used to bring these two layers together, combining the fire perimeter data with the underlying terrain to create one beautiful map. Another exciting new feature is the ability to change selection symbology. With many overlapping boundaries and polygons, the default outline symbol can make it difficult to interpret the selection. By updating the selection symbology to a hatched fill, the selection set is much easier to see. So far, we've seen some of the new visual enhancements in ArcGIS Pro. But let me show you an improvement to the overall user experience that'll really help boost your productivity, command search. Now you can find any tool or feature in ArcGIS Pro with a simple search at the top of the ribbon. For example, I can quickly find the append tool so we can add 2020 fire data to our project. And here's another time saver. Now you can copy the Python command directly from the tool without even having to run it first. But let's switch gears and talk about a large fire that occurred outside of Yosemite National Park in 2013, the Rim Fire. One of the things that fire impacts most is land cover. So let's calculate the land cover change from the year before the fire to the year after using the new change detection wizard. The change detection wizard helps guide the workflow so we can conduct this analysis easily. Here, we'll add in our land cover data and clip it to the fire boundary. And now, we're ready to run the tool. The Rim Fire was a high intensity fire that dramatically changed the landscape. Selecting the output of the tool, we can see that much of the area changed from evergreen forest to grassland and herbaceous land cover. To close out this section, let me show you two more updates to ArcGIS Pro, starting with symbology. Here we can see Yosemite National Park's trailheads and trail system data overlaid on top of the rim fire boundary, but the trailhead symbol colors don't quite match the rest of the map. ArcGIS Pro comes with a few updates to symbology. For example, we now have Pantone colors to ensure consistency while printing. But my favorite enhancement is the new eyedropper tool, which lets me interactively select any color from the map so we can quickly update our trailhead symbols. And finally, selecting anywhere in the rimfire boundary, new and improved pop-ups help us understand more about the fire itself. These pop-ups have the ability to split elements horizontally and vertically and use HTML for customization. They can also display 360 degree images, creating an immersive experience directly inside the ArcGIS Pro interface. This was a quick tour of some of the new visualization and productivity enhancements in ArcGIS Pro. Now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Ankita to talk about and share another set of exciting capabilities called data engineering. Thanks, Madeline. In ArcGIS Pro, we have added a new experience to help make your data analysis ready. This experience is called data engineering, and it will streamline your data preparation tasks by visualizing, exploring, cleaning, and transforming your data. Let me show you a few capabilities of the new data engineering view. This is the US county level unemployment data for April of this year. 
I can right click this layer and open the data engineering view. On the left, I see a list of all the fields this layer contains and their different data types. To dive deeper, I can select these fields, drag and drop them to the right and click calculate. We now see these powerful chart previews for each field and their summary statistics like minimum, maximum, standard deviation, all the way up to sophisticated statistics like skewness and kurtosis. These statistics help me understand the data. For example, the average unemployment rate is 4.9%. Over 9 million people are currently affected by unemployment. And the presence of outliers show me that some counties are suffering more than others. To visualize this data spatially, I will use the Update Symbology button. This button dynamically updates the map symbology for each field and helps me visualize spatial patterns. For example, we see stronger spatial patterns of unemployment rates in the western and southern parts of the country. I can also look at the predominant industry in each county. Another quick way to visualize your data is through charts. The Create Chart button automatically creates a bar chart for a categorical field like state name. I can select any state, for example, Nebraska, and click Calculate to see the unemployment statistics for just Nebraska. This visual and interactive interface helps me quickly understand my data, saving time and hundreds of clicks. Data engineering also includes a subset of geoprocessing tools to clean, construct, integrate, and format the data. Here are three examples. First, I want to show the fill missing value tool. Here I have 14 counties with missing unemployment rates. I can right click, select, and locate these missing values on the map. These are the independent cities in Virginia, and these missing values could be a result of upstream data processing. I can fix it using the fill missing value tool. I'll fill in the tool parameters and run the tool. The tool estimates the missing unemployment rates using the values from the neighboring counties. And once completed, the new fields get added in the list with no missing values. The next two tools I'm going to show you will help you prepare your data for advanced analytics. For example, if I see a field that looks highly skewed, all I need to do is right click and open the transform field tool. Here, I'm using a Boxcox transformation, but there are many other transformation and inverse transformation methods available in the tool. And once completed, my data is now normally distributed, which is a requirement for many regression analysis. Next, I wanna talk about dimension reduction. To train a machine learning model, we need more data, and with more data comes more complexity. For example, I have these 15 different age variables. I can select them and create a scatter plot matrix to find relationships between them. Here I see that some of my variables are highly correlated, which can impact modeling and prediction. I can fix it using the new dimension reduction tool. I'll reduce these 15 fields into fewer components whilst maintaining data variability. Using principal com component analysis for dimension reduction is a very common data engineering step, and this is now built into the software. And without writing any code, I have reduced these 15 fields into four components that I can use to train my model. With the advancement in spatial analysis and machine learning, data engineering is more important now than ever before. And these are just a few examples of how this new data engineering view can help streamline data preparation and make it analysis ready. To close out our section, Madeline is going to show us what's new in ArcGIS Pro 3D editing. Thanks, Ankita. Let's walk through some of the new 3D editing enhancements in ArcGIS Pro. This is a 3D mesh of the city of Munich. Captured in autumn, the beautiful colors of the changing leaves really pop out. 3D meshes are used throughout the ArcGIS system, 
So let's make some edits to this mesh to explore a proposed development of a new building. The first thing we want to do is grade the construction site to make room for the new development. Selecting the mesh layer, we'll add a mesh modification to replace an area of the mesh using an underlying 3D polygon. Now that the area is flat, we can add in a 3D model of the new development to explore in the context of the city. This is a 3D object feature layer that was created with Autodesk's Maya. With ArcGIS Pro, we can bring in a simple 3D model like this one, or a more detailed model like BIM. And while the building itself is a powerful visualization, let's add in some additional features like solar panels on the roof using the new array tool. The array tool quickly distributes additional features by adding in columns and rows that duplicate the original feature. So with just a few clicks, we've created our new solar panels. The last thing that we want to do is inspect underlying utilities so we can connect the proposed development to existing infrastructure. First, we'll expose what's below the surface so we can get a look at some of the underground utilities that are currently running through the street. And now we can add in a new fire hydrant and connect it to an existing water line. The new 3D grid feature helps guide our edits and the vertical line capability lets us quickly illustrate how the fire hydrant will connect to the water main, simply snapping the edit into place. All of these enhancements and many more are available for you to use today in the latest release of ArcGIS Pro. We can't wait to see how you incorporate them into your daily work.